family. Happy um, Friday the 13th energy. I um, am here to talk about the occult and what the occult is because it is Friday the 13th and it is a lucky number or as I say, good luck day. A lot of people believe that Friday the 13th um, was a bad day, especially Christians, because it's the day that uh, Jesus was crucified, they say, on Friday the 13th. So Friday the 13th has always been a bad luck day uh, considered in Christianity. But for us who are spiritualists, Friday the 13th is actually a good luck day because we know what the numbers mean, one, three, right? So I want to talk about the occult and the occult is a Latin word that um, it comes from occultus. Um, It comes. It carries the idea of things hidden, hidden, sacred and mysterious. Sorry, I had to get my thoughts. I had a blank moment there. Um, Excuse me as well as I turn pages because I have to write my notes down. Because if I don't, I will veer off topic and we would this would be a longer video, okay? So the first topic I want to talk about is magic, okay? So all the things that are a part of the occult would be things like astrology, Satanism, uh, fire walking, magic, um, Ouija boards, kind of things like the supernatural things that people uh, don't believe. Besides, if you're a spiritual person, these are things that we talk about and deal with all the time, like ghosts and spirits and um, the dead. So that is considered a cultic um, activity or thing. So magic, it's a um, magic is supposed to be a secret art. OK, um, a lot of people claim to practice magic. Um which can be true. Let me not say that. Which can be true. Um, but it is very secretive. Okay. It's not something that you go around the world saying, hey, you know, I can do this and I can do that. And I can put, you know, somebody in a jar for you and all of that crap. It's something that's uh, sacred and secretive where people should definitely come to you. You not go to them. Okay. Um, magic attempts to gain control over nature by supernatural means so if you're a spiritualist like i am you know that we use different things to um basically counteract nature so we we use herbs or oils or stones or meditation um incantations of those things or you know like manifesting with your mind that is all considered uh, magic spell charms um just all the things that we use in today's society in the spiritual world is considered magic, okay? Um, magic is used in every spiritual religion. Uh, witchcraft, um, hoodoo, voodoo, synthetia, lukumi, all of that. I mean, they all use some kind of form of magic or manipulating energy or nature, Okay, Uh, white magic is unselfish magic. So that's the um, the good stuff where you bring love into your life, where you bring in money, um, you bring in good things or you wish well on other people or, you know, you bring in a lover or something that's considered white magic, like harmless magic. And then you have black magic, uh, which causes harm on people. Okay, Um, and it is absolutely necessary to have both um, to have skill in both white magic and black magic, because sometimes you just have to hex somebody. That's just the way it is. Karma. I am karma. So you don't have to wait. So um, I also want to touch on astrology as well. So I'm just going to be talking about different um, topics of the cult, like I said. Okay, so. I have different um, occultic um, topics that I'm going to be talking about. So I just got done with magic and now I'm going to be talking about astrology. We all know what astrology is. You know, your birthday, when you were born, what time it is and how astrology works. Um, I battled with talking about astrology because there's so many um, astrologists that I know that use astrology to, um, for one, 
tell people's future, um, tell you what's going to happen, um, tell you your life journey. Like astrology is very important um, to know how the stars aligned when you were born. And that kind of gives the astrologer um, detail of who you are, where you, you know, where you're going to be in life and what's your life purpose. Um, numerology is like the cousin to astrology. So astrology uses the stars and the planets and stuff like that. Numerology breaks you down by number. That's probably my favorite, numerology. I love numerology. I love breaking people down by the numbers. What's your birthday? Let me break you down. Because numbers and math do not lie. Numbers do not lie. Um, one thing with astrology that I have um, realized is where it can be trouble for astrologers or numerologists, people, for twins, okay? If two people are born on the same day, same time how are they the same how do they have the same life purpose there is no way that they can have the same life purpose because we know as human beings and some people might know twins that twins are total totally opposite of each other they are not the same okay so moving on i want to talk about demons because they are real okay and what we call demons is like Demons is like a lower vibrational self or lower vibrational energy, like really, really low. Um, they're spirits without bodies. So say if I die and I died negatively or I'm just a negative person, I can become a negative energy that impacts other people's lives. OK, uh, demon demons were on um, originally in fellowship with God. So as we know, um, the lower energy self is kind of. It's just the bad stuff. The bad stuff we don't want. Um, demons can possess animals and humans. Okay. That is very true. And how you could know if someone is possessed by a demon. They start acting different. Um, their appetite changes. They're always moody. And we call it the energy divide. You know, like they energy change. Like what's wrong with you? You know, um, especially for empaths, they are very easy to get possessed because they already suck in energy from everybody and they can definitely be possessed by demonic or negative energy way faster than someone who's like me, where I am a projector of energy. I don't receive energy well, but I can project it. That's what makes me so great at what I do. Because I can project my energy onto anything. Um, demons are numerous. So you got to think the world is so big. Negative energy is everywhere. It's so easy to um, be influenced by negative energy. Because, you know, some people like, it feels good to be down. It feels good to be, you know, in negative. Negative Betty or negative Susie, as you call. But let me tell you demons uh they are real and they exist and i gotta say from my impasse we're extra protection um all times because you are very 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 subjected to um being possessed and wouldn't even know it you know uh let's talk about ghosts so ghosts are spirit apparitions or we ghosts can be considered like your ancestors. You know, when they come and visit you, you can feel their presence. You can smell their perfume or their cologne or the cigarettes they smoked or, you know, you know what I mean. So ghosts are definitely real and they can communicate with the living. OK, as we know, like I said, they are saying certain things to you like scents, smells, taste. Uh, sometimes flickering lights, flickering TVs, um, where you feel like someone is, you ever been asleep and feel like someone sat down on the bed and you open your eyes and know what is there, that spirit trying to communicate, <laughs> they will try. Okay. Bring it in your ears real loud, high pitch sound in your ear. For me, it's the high pitch and then it's, they always come in this ear and then it gets clogged and I'm like, Oh my God, pressure. Um, especially when I'm laying down, they communicate. But ghosts are definitely real. And I hate to call them ghosts because, you know, we call it spirits because they are spirit apparitions. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next subject would be Ouija boards. 
Okay, I wanted to talk about Ouija boards because people are so afraid of Ouija boards and they have been tied to negative energy. They have been tied to the devil, Satanism, and all of that kind of stuff. As you know, Ouija, Ouija board is a board game you can buy at any store, and it's a wooden game, and it comes with like a magnifying glass that, in a triangle that moves, okay? If you know anything about triangles, they hold energy. It is the energy symbol. Um, that's why the pyramids are triangular, because... That structure holds a lot of energy, okay? A triangle is very, 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 very popular. Very powerful, I mean. So a Ouija board, it comes, you know, it's a wooden board game. It has letters and numbers on it, and it comes with like a magnifying triangular glass thing that supposedly moved by itself. And a lot of people think that it's negative because um, some people have become possessed. Um, things happen when you play the game, but this is my kick on the game, okay? If you don't know what you're doing, when you're calling on spirit, you don't need to be playing with no Ouija board. A lot of people call on spirit and don't have no type of protection, okay? And burning sage in your house is not the first defense of protecting yourself, okay? Sage is like a backup, okay? Say if I heavily cleanse, spiritually cleanse my house and I just had visitors. So I'll come through with sage to clean it up. Just the residue. You know, it's it's powerful, but not that powerful where it should be um, your first defense of protection. Okay. Or clearing out energy. All right. Always get your home grounded first. But moving back to Ouija boards, I told you I can get off subject. But um Definitely be careful playing with these Ouija boards. Can contact spirit just like uh, tarot cords, a pendulum, anything that you open up to spirit where they can move and communicate, they're coming. And having yourself protected is very important because if you're not specific in who you're contacting, you can get the wrong energy to come through and mess some things up for you. And it's not pretty. So, yeah. Uh, even to follow the Ouija board, getting into tarot reading, okay? Same thing. You have to be very protected when you are dealing with tarot cards. Make sure that you're in a sacred space, um, that you have the right candles going, uh, the right circle cast before you even pick up tarot cards. OK, um, and also tarot cards is a way to look into the future. Believe it or not, we are not supposed to know the future. OK, Going to a tarot reader is supposed to be for emergencies only. Um, a lot of people abuse tarot ability. They want to know every little detail of their life. They want to know everything that's going on. That's not how life works. And when you start meddling with the future, it alters time and alters a lot of things. And that's how things slow up. So you go to this tarot reader to see if um you know your man is coming or you know uh is it money coming and all of that kind of stuff it's not gonna come because you keep tapping into forces that you're not supposed to and messing up the energy flow let things flow let it go you don't always have to know the future but yes yeah, so tarot reading like i said it is a way to look into the future for emergency purposes only okay it's not, it's not supposed to be used all the time. Um, I also want to touch on Satan and Satanism because a lot of people get misconstrued with Satan. So for Christian, uh, Christianity, you know, Satan is very real for them. They believe that this man lives under the ground and he's red with a pitchfork and it's a fire of hell. Um, spiritualists know that Satan could be anyone. Because Satan represents evil, uh, kind of like demons represent negativity, negative energy. Um, so to spiritualists like us, Satan does not exist. The person who carries the energy could be Satan themselves because Satan is a symbol of evil of, you know, uh, some people are really living in eternal hell because that's just what frequency they're on. And even with Satanism, for people who, you know, worship the dark forces that 
practices dark magic all the time and don't have a piece of light, you know, in them. But you got to have both. You got to have both. You can't be um, all dark, all light. You just can't, you know. So I just wanted to come and talk to you guys on this Friday the 13th and talk to you guys about understanding a little bit about the occult and what the occult consists of. So if somebody says, oh my God, you're part of a cult, you really are a part of a cult. Um, Because that's what is considered in the cult. So (laughs) you are, if you're a spiritualist and you do these type of things, you are a part of the occult. So I just had to come and drop this video. It's been a minute since I've been able to reach out and do a video for you guys. If you have any suggestions on videos you would like me or topics you would like me to talk about, please leave a comment in the comment section. I will appreciate it. I also will be dropping a video Monday um, with a king. um, I don't know how to say his name yet. I haven't uh, formally introduced myself, but we will be getting together to do a video about what it's like to um, be masculine in spirituality. What it's like for the man to um, be spiritual. Like, what is their journey? How is the journey going for the masculine? Because so many groups on Facebook is piled with women who, you know, we get advice from each other and we're healing and we're moving forward and we're conquering things. But I want to know from a man's perspective how it is to be spiritual and what their journey is like. So please, please, please subscribe. Hit like, hit share. If you want to see that video, it will only be uploaded to my YouTube channel um for the viewers who subscribed um so please subscribe don't miss this opportunity to see me interview a great king about um his spirituality path so i'll talk to you guys later probably next week monday i will be dropping the video probably tuesday um so yeah i'll see you guys next week bye